G'day ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Bitcoin update. Today we're going to be discussing the short-term breakout that we've seen in the last 24 hours. A big surge in price action on Bitcoin up to that upper 29k level, testing 30k actually briefly getting over 30k. Obviously the marker we need to get over is 31k to see a long-term breakout, but we'll be analyzing that short-term breakout to see if it will materialize into a long-term breakout. On top of that, of course, we're looking into the whole idea of a long-term breakout. We're looking into the Bitcoin ranges themselves and we're taking a brief dive into the Bitcoin macro as per Gaussian channel on the weekly chart, which has just flipped green for the first time in four years and Gaussian channel on the five-day chart, which flipped green for the first time in four years recently, back in May. Uh, we're going to be comparing both of those Gaussian channels, seeing the differences between them and seeing what they indicate for Bitcoin. Also, lastly, we'll be looking into Ethereum very briefly and some on-chain charts. Okay, guys, that's what the video is going to be about, basically analyzing the short-term move and showing you that we're on the way to something bigger as we've been doing for a while. We've seen a double bottom on 28.6K. Very exciting stuff. Guys, let's get into it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you the charts we're going to be looking into today. We're going to be looking into the Bitcoin daily chart, look into the move we saw to the top of a descending channel formation and the liquidity wick to the upside, see if that breakout is going to be occurring. We've got a definitive answer there. We're then going to be looking into shorter term of the same structure, four hourly chart, 15 minute chart of the same structure. We're going to be looking into three day chart in regards to the August move very briefly because we've discussed that before. Again, I believe there will be a big move in August directionally for Bitcoin. I believe that move is brewing. Uh, we then will be looking into to the Bitcoin range chart very briefly, and then the Ethereum chart, as well as the Gaussian channel chart on the weekly chart, and also on the five-day chart, both of which tell us a little bit of a different story, one of which gives us a slightly bearish scenario, but both of which are ultimately macro bullish. So, Quite a lot to look into today. Uh, a lot of those charts will be brief skims through, but a lot of them are actually very important as well, including uh, the most recent moves to the upside. All right, before we get into it though, the BitGet Exchange, I want you guys to check this out. Five times lower fees than Binance. I reached out to these guys for a partnership. They did not reach out to me. I've been with them for over a year and a half. We've had no problems. Sign up using my referral link in the pinned comment or description below for a 15% trading fee discount and exclusive rewards, guys. Go ahead and do that. All right, let's get into the video. We'll start off with the daily charts. We'll start off with... Uh, the short-term price action, uh, et cetera. So what have we seen in the last uh, little, little while? Well, first of all, let me explain what we're actually seeing on a, on a larger term scale. And we can do that very well by looking at the, the range charts, the Bitcoin ranges. We have three definition, definitive ranges on Bitcoin. I'm going to briefly skim through it because we've discussed this before. We have the red range, okay, the orange range, and the yellow range. We've had three of these ranges. They've, they've occurred within the last year. Basically, Bitcoin's you know, spent most of its time in the orange range here. That top was at 24.5K. The bottom of that range is at around 19K. The red range was the bottoming out range at around, you know, 15K to 18K. And right now we're in the yellow range. Now, the reason I have these, these writings here, these bullish above the yellow range and bearish below the red range is because obviously if we drop below the red range, we go to new lows. And if we get above uh, the yellow range here, we're going back into the bull market territory. That doesn't mean we're re-entering a bull market. It's very important. It doesn't mean we're re-entering a bull market. But it means we're re-entering the territory we were in when we saw the bull market. Guys, look at the bull market here. That's for 2021 bull market. Look where the lows were on each of the bounces. The lows were at 20 at this region here at 32K. Again, at this region at 32K, we saw big bounces off of this level on two occasions. And when we finally came down and lost this level, we saw a strong rejection off of the level before dropping down further. That shows us that 32K, the top of the range we're in right now, which we've rejected from very recently, right, on two occasions, is a very important zone. And if we get above 32K, we will be breaking back into bullish territory and seeing some good price action on Bitcoin. We know this, we know this is a fact really, and the fact that we've seen a decisive move to the upside in the last, you know, six, seven, eight months is such a good indicator for Bitcoin on a macro scale. It really supports the four-year cycle, but ultimately the next test is 32K. And basically, you know, our big support right now is 24.5 and our big resistance is 32. And so long as we're ranging in between those levels, nothing's really happened. Now, I believe uh, very decisively, okay, that there is a very, very, very strong chance that Bitcoin will break upwards. Uh, you know, I shouldn't say very, very, very. I feel like that's an over-exaggeration. I'll say it this way. I believe there's like an 80% chance, four out of five, that Bitcoin will be breaking upwards in the month of August, okay? Upwards out of this formation on the logarithmic chart. I believe we'll be breaking upwards. Therefore, I believe that there is a four out of five chance that Bitcoin will be breaking 32K, right, in August or very, very early September. So I believe Bitcoin moves the upside. Now, in the occurrence that we moved for downside, all right, 
it's not actually the end of the world. And the reason being is because a break to the downside of this macro uptrending logarithmic line, which we're compressing against, right? We're either going to move upwards or move down. It's going to happen by the end of August, basically. That's where the compression zone ends. If we move down, which is the unlikely scenario, okay? And I, if you want to know why it's likely, why it's unlikely, you can watch yesterday's video. I'm not going to be going over all of the information again. I did it all in yesterday's video. Why is it unlikely we're going to break down? Watch yesterday's video. In the unlikely scenario we break down, we won't actually be losing the range we're currently in. We will simply be going for a retest to the bottom of the range. So even if we do get breakdown, which is unlikely, we're not actually in a very bad situation because we wouldn't have lost the current range yet. If we lose the current range, if we lose 24.5K, that's when the bad situation begins. But basically, all I wanted to get you to understand there is that Bitcoin is ranging between 24.5K and 32k all right and we've seen this range for a long period of time and we've seen uh compression in this range okay if we go to the monthly chart on bitcoin let's bring up the monthly chart on bitcoin we can show you the compression we've seen and we'll go to the blx all right this compression that we are seeing here we'll go to logarithmic is basically something that we don't see very often at all i'm just going to remove these lines and then i'll show you uh the bullinger bands so we get rid of these lines and we bring up the Bullinger Bands. The Bullinger Bands is a compression indicator. When these Bullinger Bands compress against each other, it means the volatility is very low. When volatility is very low for a period of time, a decent period of time, it means the market is winded up for a big spring, basically. We saw Bullinger Band compression on the monthly chart in March 2016. Look what happened right after March. Bang, springed upwards. Same thing here in 2020. Bang, springed upwards. We're seeing, we're seeing Bullinger Band compression for the third time in Bitcoin's price history ever since the first halving, all right? And this is occurring here in August 2023 as we are compressing quite strongly uh, on this chart over here with this triangle formation, it is very likely that Bitcoin springs upwards just like it did in the past on a macro scale. Very, very likely. So the market is compressed, the market is clamped up. And the reason it's clamped up is because we've seen low volatility. You know, I brought up charts in yesterday's video. I'll just explain to you what they were now. I'm not going to bring them back up. Charts that show us that we're seeing the lowest volume on a quarterly basis that we've seen since 2020. Charts that show us that long-term holders on Bitcoin are dominating the market more than they've ever dominated the market. Again, I'll say that again. Short-term versus long-term holders. Long-term holders are dominating the market more than they've ever dominated the market. When you're seeing low volatility, when you're seeing low volume, and when you're seeing long-term holders dominating the market, holders dominating the market, it shows you okay, that people aren't throwing around their Bitcoin every three seconds. They're happy to hold because they're not scared because they understand the macro is strong. This is great news. It actually shows a significant amount of bullish strength, right? But silently, it's like an incognito version of bullish strength. So obviously everyone is on edge now and they're waiting for that big move because everyone knows it's going to come, right? And Bitcoin has been bullish on the daily chart as well, right? Because what we've seen, yes, we've seen a downwards trend, but we've seen a downwards trend in form of a descending channel formation. And that's actually a very bullish downwards trend in the same way that the downwards trend that we saw over here, okay, watch where I'm drawing up now, the same way that we just saw the downwards trend over here was bullish. We saw a downwards trend for a couple of months, a long period of time, right? And it was a significant downwards trend. It was a, it was a pretty big drop, 20% drop, you know, more than that actually. Uh, but it was a downwards trend, yes. And you could say that was bearish, lower highs, lower lows, but it was a downwards trend in form of a descending channel, a descending wedge formation, which is actually a bullish structure overall. And that's why during that whole drop, I was saying Bitcoin was bullish. We saw a bullish retest of the uh, liquidity zone over here, supply zone, and we bounced right off of it, 24.5K, which is the bottom of the range. It was a very, very bullish correction. And you can have bullish corrections. And we're seeing right now another version of a bullish correction on a smaller scale. We saw a big impulse to the upside. Okay, we reached a higher high, very slightly, but it was a higher high. And now we've come down, we've got a setting channel formation. And just like in the last, uh, you know, bullish correction, we've seen it again, a descending channel formation. And this usually breaks to the upside and we're edging towards a break to the upside right now. So I would expect this to break to the upside. Uh, I don't think it's 100% confirmed to have done so yet. And the reason being is because we haven't really seen a clear break. I mean, we've come up, this is the four hourly chart, by the way. You know, what we've, what we've done is we've come up recently, just in the last 24 hours, uh, we've bounced very strong off of uh, this zone at 28.6K, which we know is a very, very strong support zone. We spoke about that a lot. In fact, during this entire, uh, you know, consolidation up here, during the entirety of July, I was saying we're going to retest 28.6K. You go back to any of my videos in July, and I said that we came down perfectly, perfectly retest 28.6K and bounced very strongly after a, a double bottom. So absolutely, you know, spectacular prediction by this YouTube channel there. Uh, and you guys would have been aware of that. Bounced off of it very strongly and now we've come up and we're just edging towards breaking the top of the channel formation. I, I expect to see this channel formation break. Uh, you know, we've got 15 minute charts showing that it basically has broken. The only problem is, 
Uh, it's very hard to say whether it has actually broken or not due to the fact that we saw a fake out above it and a strong uh, liquidity wick there. That's usually a sign of reversal. And it's also very hard to draw it very precisely because it's not actually as precise as I like to think it is, right? Or as we would like it to be. We have a, uh, a deviation on the first wick there, which makes it very hard to draw, you know, how, how it's meant to be drawn exactly. It's, it's actually slightly off. Uh, so it's hard to say whether it's broken out or not exactly. It's hard to say whether it's going to correct or not exactly. What I can say is that it's very important. It holds this red box here. It's very important that it holds uh, this level at around 29.5k. So provided it does that, uh, we can see a bounce off of that and a retest and a breakout from there. That would be the ideal scenario. Uh, obviously, the ideal scenario is we just break out straight away, but that would be the ideal scenario if we were to go back down for a correction. But overall, Bitcoin has seen a double bottom formation. And I do expect this to uh, materialize into a breakout. I don't really expect Bitcoin to go back down to that 28K region at this point in time. I don't really think that's necessary. Uh, technically, it could do it because we'd still maintain the descending wedge and anything within the wedge is viable, I suppose. But I mean, at this point in time, it looks like this might be the opportunity to break out. It's just very hard to say. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put any 100% certainty on this breakout. But what I will say is there's a, definitely a chance that this breakout is valid. Uh, now, what I would say as well is that this breakout on short term is not the same thing as a breakout on long term. And the long-term breakout is what really matters. So in a way, you can kind of not really care about the short-term breakout at this point because the long-term breakout is what matters. And in order to break out on the long-term, we need to break this chart here. And that means we need to break above something like 31K. Okay, so if we break 31K, then we're in the clear, then we've broken out, and then we can gain the rapid upwards momentum that we need to break 32K and start targeting these higher levels such as you know 38K and 36K. Uh, guys, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I believe that Bitcoin will be reaching 38 to 36K uh, on this next impulse to the upside. And I honestly do believe that will probably be around the ultimate top for 2023. Maybe we go a little bit higher, but I don't see us going much higher than that in 2023. But that's basically the next major resistance above 32K that I'm seeing. And yeah, I don't want to act. To, I don't want to act to see. You know, you know. Sorry, I can't really speak right now. I don't want to act as though I'm particularly confident in where the top for 2023 will be, uh, because it's hard to say. And obviously, this uptrending line that we're holding for support right now will actually be crossing over that level that I just said in 2023. So you know, maybe we go a little bit higher, but the point is that's the next major resistance and we are running out of time in 2023 and generally impulses take a lot of time to recharge. So that's that next level that I'm looking at. And I don't, you know, look, put it this way. I'm not expecting all-time highs in 2023. I'm expecting all-time highs in 2024. So put it that way. But kind of going further into the fact that Bitcoin hasn't really confirmed to break out yet, as I said, we need to see like 31K for an actual breakout is the Ethereum chart. The Ethereum chart's actually been very important for Bitcoin because if you're looking at when Bitcoin bounced, okay, Bitcoin has an uptrending support line. It does. Now, it has it on logarithmic as well, and the logarithmic one is more important, but it has an uptrending support line on the price chart as well. And we were actually expecting Bitcoin to bounce off of this yellow line over here in this correction, because that would have held the, the uh, supply zone. And it also would have made a clean bounce off that uptrending line. Now, it tends, turns out that we actually didn't bounce off that uptrending line. We didn't quite make it there. We bounced off of the logarithmic line on Bitcoin, but we also bounced off uh, the uptrending line on Ethereum. And the uptrending line on Ethereum has been quite accurate. It's been tested on one, two, three, that's uh, two separate retests here. So two, three, four, five separate occasions. Uh, and so we're actually looking at this, the, the Ethereum line as well uh, for support. If this breaks down, that's a very bad sign for Bitcoin. But overall, it shows us that the Ethereum chart is actually very important for Bitcoin. And we do have a secondary uptrending support line for Ethereum, this yellow dotted, dotted line. And we just retested that from a downside and saw a pretty bad retest, pretty bad rejection. So that could be a sign that perhaps Bitcoin isn't out of the clear in the short term yet. And perhaps Bitcoin uh, you know, ha has some more consolidation to do. I hate to say it, but the fact of the matter is, guys, you know, uh, we do have until the end of August, until the breakout should occur. And that is, you know, three weeks away. So we've got actually some time here. Bitcoin doesn't have to move right now. It could very well do it right now. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it's not going to. I'm saying that I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm just saying it doesn't have to. We could see more consolidation. But yeah, overall, I mean, I can't deny what I've seen in short term. I can't deny the fact that we've seen a very strong bullish bounce, uh, you know, double bottom off of 28.6K exactly as expected. I can't deny that. So it, it would be surprising, but it wouldn't be, you know, revolutionary or anything like that. Now, I briefly discussed Gorgian channels in yesterday's video. Uh, but I want to discuss them again because I discussed the five-day Gorgian channel in yesterday's video. Uh, and I want to briefly go over both of these things to give you an understanding of just how macro bullish Bitcoin really is. Uh, the weekly Gorgian channel for the first time in four years has flipped green. Okay, It's flipped green for the first time in four years. Similarly, the, the five-day Gorgian channel recently flipped green for the first time in four years minus the COVID uh, 
situation over here because that was not actually meant to happen. It was not meant to flip back red during COVID. That was a black swan event that caused it to flip red. We can ignore that. Uh, but basically, both the weekly chart Gaussian channel and the five-day Gaussian channel are not now green. This is extremely good. If you're looking at periods of time when they have been green, just look at when it was been green, right? Look at the weekly chart. When the Gaussian channel has been green, look at the price action we've seen. Green, massively good price action. When it's been red, we've seen bear markets. Green, bull market. Red, bear market. Okay, this happens over and over again. Green, bull market again. Red, bear market. If it's flipped back green, what does this indicate? It indicates that it's going to be uh, a, a very strong market on a macro scale. And, and this, on top of many, many other things, indicates that, right? We've also got a trend with the Gaussian channel, you know, going more deep than red and green. We've got a trend in which we, when we drop through the center line, we continue, continue in the direction we drop through it, right? We drop through from the top side, we went through to the downside. Same thing, went upwards, okay, went through it, went downwards, went through it. We moved through this thing like water and we've moved through it once again, more recently, moved through it very well. And we can assume that based on that, you know, price trend, we should be moving through it and seeing more gains to the upside, okay, over a decent period of time. Bitcoin is very, very strong from a macro perspective, and the Gaussian channel is one of the indicators for that. It's one of the most important indicators that Bitcoin actually has because it's very, very accurate. It's never, ever failed. The problem with the Gaussian channel is it's not precise. It doesn't show us where exactly Bitcoin will top and where exactly Bitcoin will bottom on the moves. It simply shows us that Bitcoin will be seeing the move. But that's enough, right? Because it shows us that Bitcoin will be going upwards. We don't know where it will go. The Gaussian channel doesn't tell us where it will go, but it does say it will go upwards. Look, put it this way. We've never seen in the entire... I'm talking about the entire price history of Bitcoin here. Okay, this is not a joke. In the entire price history of Bitcoin, we have never, ever, ever seen the Gaussian channel flip red and flip green very quickly, or flip green or flip red very quickly. Every time it's flipped red, for example, it's been red for at least a year. It was a, it was a year and three months over here. It was red over here from October 2018 all the way to, to July uh, 2019, right? That's not quite a year, but it's almost, it's nine months. It's a decent period of time. And when it's been green, it's been green for years on end. It has just flipped green, okay? If we're going by the smallest time it's ever flipped a, a color before, it should be at least nine months, which should be which means we should be seeing at least, you know, a decent amount of upwards price action on Bitcoin at the very, 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 very least. At the, at the best, and cyclically speaking, we should be seeing a long-term uh, green flip on Gaussian channel which should indicate very good bitcoin price action same thing can be said about the five day chart literally the exact same thing right it's just a different uh, a different time frame and the five day chart the reason why i like the five day chart gaussian channel i think it's actually a little bit more useful is because it's uh, more short term we get the flips quicker it's more reactive to the price action right ignore this arrow that was for a thumbnail a while ago uh it's more reactive to the price action and and you know we can see that because it flipped green a little bit earlier than it, than the weekly chart did and we've seen up its price action since then uh but basically you know, it's a little bit more reactive to the price action which was actually its downfall during covid because the covid drop threw it off a little bit but we can ignore that piece of data uh and it's the same story right when it flips green it's very good when it flips red it's very bad uh and you know we've seen a small little deviations from that during all the way back here in 2012 and the covid drop but overall it remains true uh and we have flip green on the five day gaussian as well we spoke about this yesterday the fact of the matter is bitcoin macro is very strong still we make that point in every video i don't want to you know overly discuss it because it's getting repetitive at this point bitcoin macro is very good i believe that bitcoin is uh, more likely than not to see an upwards price action surge uh starting by the end of this month okay uh i believe there is a chance that we've actually seen the beginning of that but i don't believe it's you know <laughs> locked in by any by any means i think there's also a chance that the short term has seen a liquidity wick to the upside and we'll see a correction before we see anything uh but overall we need to break this level here that i'm marking right now at around 31k that is the level we need to break because that is where this triangle formation uh is at its top okay so Lots to kind of look into over the next month. The next month is going to be very, very important. And I no doubt, I have no doubt at all that the charts will remain interesting. Uh, and there's going to be lots to discuss and there's, you know, there's going to be lots to dissect. And so I'm looking forward to it, guys, because we've seen long-term sideways price action on Bitcoin now. We've seen this same range on Bitcoin. You know, where's the range chart? I might have removed it. Uh, yeah, we have removed it. I've seen, you know, we've seen this same range since 24.5k on Bitcoin. We broke above it in March and it's August now. It's been a long period of time, you know, almost six months, five months now of, of sideways price action in the same range. So it will be interesting to see uh, which way this range breaks, upside or downside. I believe personally it'll be upside. We'll have to wait and see. Guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Check out the Crypto Academy. Uh, this course will teach you how to 
trade. Basically, the name is Become a Trader. It's in the name. Become a Trader, 10 unit course. Uh, you can read the website, what the course is about. You can read the blurb, the description. You can read uh, the unit outlines, what the units are, what their names are, what they include. Uh, and you can ultimately throw us an email at cryptoacademycourses at gmail.com. And that email address is linked on the website there, as you can see. Also, go ahead, guys, and check out the VIP group. We trade altcoins on VIP. We've got 15 pending altcoin trades right now on VIP ready to go, okay, for when we see the breakout this month. So if you join VIP, you'll get access to 15 pending trades and you can, you know, trade all of those coins and make some decent profits. We've got a 79% win rate. We don't lose very often in VIP. It's four out of every five trades. Four out of every five trades, guys, coming to profit on VIP. 79% win rate, extremely good. Uh, you can sign up to VIP, you can check out the details about it, check the results in the information group, and you can find that link in the description below. Guys, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. Sorry for stuttering a lot in this video, I'm not sure why I'm doing that, uh, but I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.